everyone, it's Courtney from the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center, and today I am hanging out with Wiley and his little girl from back there, Maya. Now, Wiley and Maya are both coyotes, and so they're not like our wolves where we really go in and are able to and pet them and socialize with them. Now, our owner can do that, and you'll be able to see her uh, talk with Wiley in a little bit, but for the most part, these guys have a natural fear of humans. Now, coyotes are everywhere, and the problem with coyotes being everywhere is you're going to have, of course, run-ins with them with livestock and domesticated animals. So, a lot of the times, what ends up happening is people start doing coyote hunting competitions and they're thinking that eradicating this species in one area over a short time span is going to help with the population and they get prizes for it. So this is found all over. Now the problem with these contests is again, they're going to be killing as many coyotes as they can in a short amount of time and they're thinking that's putting a dent in the coyote population. There's That's not possible. So you could even get rid of 75% of the coyote population over the next 50 years, and coyotes are still going to be expanding their population across the United States. Now, coyotes, they breed multiple times a year, and they're doing that to repopulate. It's not just alphas like with wolves that are breeding. They're going to breed with anyone and everyone. So when coyotes are dinning for life, and say that you had 10 coyotes in your neighborhood, and they're causing a problem with your livestock or your dogs, and you start killing them, say you take away five of them, what you've actually done is take away half of their their competition for eating rabbits and rodents because this is what they are able to eat. One coyote can eat up to 2,000 rodents a year. So you've literally doubled their food supply. So what they do is they're smart enough to know we need to repopulate because they're also seeing, okay, our population is going down. So the next time they go to repopulate, instead of having five pups, that coyote is now bigger and stronger because you've doubled its food supply and they can have all the way up to 20 pups in one litter and they're doing this multiple times a year. So we do kill over 400,000 coyotes every single year in the United States. Three-fourths of them are with these coyote competitions. And what you're ended up seeing is they're actually expanding their territory about 75% across the United States, and they're constantly growing in their population size. And these coyote competitions are doing a lot of damage because you have different teams, and you go out one night, like I said, short amount of time, just a couple hours, and whoever kills the most coyotes wins the competition. What they're actually causing, and the reason that you're able to do that in Wyoming every single month, or sometimes they're doing it every single weekend, what you're seeing is they're able to do that because they're just helping the coyote population grow, and so unlike wolves, big cats, and bears, the populations are never shrinking. They're always fluctuating. Your coyote population, like I said, will never eventually just be eradicated. That's literally impossible. You also don't want that to happen. The coyotes are considered keystone predators. And what that means is they are keeping the ecosystem in check and healthy. Now, unfortunately, they're not able to take care of a lot of your big elk and deer problems. And that's why you are having overpopulated areas because coyotes are the number one predator in most of our states. Even here in Colorado, although we haven't had a wolf pack since 1940, but we still have big cats and bears running around. Well, unfortunately, our government has decided to start calling those animals out too. So these guys, look how small Wiley is. He's a little bit chunky <laughs> because he gets a lot of these treats because he's so cute. But these guys are trying to control our populations like elk and deer that they absolutely can't. But again, he's going to be able to eat up to 2,000 rodents a year. And what that's helping is with one, your rodent control and disease control because rodents, of course, carry diseases. So specifically here in Colorado, we still have rodents running around the Black Death or the bubonic plague. And I think we all know that that, of course, is his historically one of the deadliest things that we've ever seen, especially in Europe. And so say Wiley here was wild, and he came across a prairie dog that had bubonic plague. He's going to be able to consume the prairie dog and not get sick because the enzymes in Wiley's stomach are actually going to be breaking down the disease. Not only that, when he releases the rest of the animal in the wild, you cannot find the black death anywhere in his scat. The best way to get rid of coyotes is something called coyote hazing. That's actually scare tactics. You're going to mimic what's happening in the wild. So if Wiley here came up on one of our wolves' territory in the wild, our wolves are not automatically going to tear him down. In the worst case scenario, they will, but for the most part, what they're going to do is be a bigger, bradder predator. And that's going to scare little Wiley here away. He knows that he is not going to want to get in a fight with a wolf pack. So, good boy, Wiley. What you want to do is be that bigger, better predator with not necessarily the predator part. Scare tactic. Stop shooting the gun at the coyotes. Start shooting around the coyotes. That's actually going to drive them away. This has been scientifically proven that scare tactics are going to work better than killing methods. We've even had people that tie those flags on strings around tree posts. That has scared their coyotes away. Those methods are going to be way better than killing them because, again, when you kill coyotes, you're only leading to more coyotes. The Animal Legal Defense Fund has actually said that trying to get rid of coyotes in ecosystems, of course, is going to be extremely unhealthy. Again, with these competitions, these coyote competitions that you're seeing, Wyoming, Montana, Texas, pretty much everywhere since coyotes are everywhere. 
that literally is different than you having a coyote tag and killing three or four coyotes for protecting your property. Again, we don't encourage you to do that, but when you're allowing participants, you know, 20 people or more to go out and themselves kill as many coyotes as they can, that's extremely harmful to your ecosystem. You're trying to take away a keystone predator and there's a reason that you're able to do this multiple times a year in some of these states because you're just causing more. You're never going to see that decline in population and at the end of the day, coyotes even though predators are coming last for the reasons why your livestock are dying the number one predator to kill your livestock is coyotes and if you really want to protect your livestock or your cats and your dogs you would stop killing them and start learning how to coexist with them because like any other animal or any other predator they serve a purpose and yes they might be a little bit more pesky but there of course are humane ways to get rid of them but if you see how cute little uh wiley is here you know, we obviously aren't encouraging to make coyotes pets. That actually hasn't been possible. We're just saying, think of little Wiley right there. Next time you have that coyote, don't be scared of them. They are definitely more scared of you than you are of them. But they also will challenge where you're living because that's also where they're living. Again, denning for life. If you've, you know, come out and poured concrete on there, they might be saying, hey, I was here first. I'm just kind of going to adjust my way of life around you, which coyotes are totally capable of. Coyotes are found everywhere. They're even in New York City in Central Park. And there's, of course, a reason for that. So they serve a purpose, but please, please just think of them and think of being a really good part and playing a role in your ecosystem and making it healthier by using these humane methods. So we are going to have Darlene talk to y'all a little bit more about Wiley, his story, and a couple more things about residential coyotes, urban coyotes, and how to deal with them. And um, just her opinion, she is our founder and owner. She actually rescued Wiley. So we're going to go ahead and give it over to her so you can hear, find out a little bit more about these really, really amazing creatures. This is Courtney, though, from the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center. Thank you. Hi, this is Darlene with Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center, and this is Wiley. <laughs> uh, Wiley and I have been together for about five years. Um, Wiley was actually a rescue. Uh, his mother actually was shot, and um, he was uh, brought to us, and uh, we raised him. But um, when we got him, he was a little baby. Had him in the house. He was very, very sick. So we raised him in the house and um, learned very quick that a wild animal turns into a wild animal before long, even though they're babies. Uh, so when he did start to become a coyote um, and started tearing up everything in the house and set marking and everything like that, then we had to be able to find a place for him. Wasn't actually prepared, so the place out in the back here was actually for our dogs, and then they had to move. So uh, this is Wiley territory out here. But Wileys, I'm sure a lot of you see Wileys all over. You see them in town, uh, there you can find them sometimes in your backyard. Uh, you can see them downtown LA, down, downtown uh, Denver. They become what we call urban coyotes. Urban coyotes, the reason why you're seeing more and more is because, first of all, habitat loss. More and more people are moving into areas to where wildlife, you know, uh, where they live. And some of them move out, some of them actually become to where they're threatened or endangered because of that. And then there's others like uh, Wiley here that has decided, hey, I'll just learn to live in your backyard. So they find food, uh, they uh, are very proficient little predators, um, and so they uh, can make a living off of uh, dog food, um, sometimes off of your cat. <laughs> so, you know, they, they are little predators, and, but there are ways to coexist together. And some of the ways of co coexisting together is just make sure that you don't have food around your house where they can get into it. And um, also, um, if you are uh, walking your dog and it is in t coyote territory, uh, just make sure that you have some things that uh, can scare a coyote. It's called hazing. Simply, all that is is something that can scare them by an umbrella, popping it open. It scares them. It's unnatural to them. Taking your jacket, flipping it over your head, something like that. Um, a little bell in your pocket, doing something like that. I mean, these are ways that if you are in, uh, you know, coyote country and you have your dog or something like that, that can deter them from coming around. Um, but they are here to stay. And um, the coyote, it's one of my favorite animals, but they've been the most persecuted animals, I think, of all. And it's, it's just simply amazing in this day and age of how we have coyote hunts and, and contests, really contests, how sad is that on our own wildlife? Um, and penning, penning, if you don't know what that is, and you can look it up to get even more gruesome details, but I guess basically what I'm gonna tell you is um, 
it is legal, it's legal in the United States to be able to capture wild coyotes, put them in a pen, and um, have your dog, uh, your hound dog, to uh, go after that coyote. It's in a pen, so it can't get out, and sometimes it'll take one to two dogs, and the dogs literally rip the coyote apart alive. Um, it's called pinning. And it's like, I, it just amazes me because I can't believe that this day and age we can still do things like that to our wild. But coyotes are very important in our ecosystem. Without coyotes, we would seriously have a big overpopulation of rodents. They are definitely rodent controlled. They love rats and mice and rabbits and squirrels and chipmunks and things like that that keeps the rodent population down. And so it's just, they're part of the natural balance. And so I do believe that they need to be in our ecosystem and it is our duty and responsibility to learn to coexist with them. Okay, so a little bit about Wiley here and um, I hope uh, that um, you'll learn to, you know, learn more about these magnificent, wonderful animals. And um, if you have any questions, you can always email us at wolfeducation.org and we can see if we can help you out. Thanks so much. Bye.